it's time for the visit with the person of high strangeness. Uh, this is show number four in um, in the series Najoni, uh, and today we're taking you from Texas to New Mexico. To remind you, Najoni means um, it's a Navajo word, and it means um, it, like going on a journey. Uh, it's called a beauty way. And so last week we left you off in um, um, well, you left me off in in Roby, Texas. There was a little town 87 miles from where I really needed to go. And I got hung up in some really, really bad winds. And the sheriff's department put me in an old makeshift car wash uh, for trucks that they had. And um, normally, they kept a fire engine in there. Now, to, be, to refresh your memory, I took in the real time in the horrendous winds that were present. In the car wash, I had an opening on the top, of course, I did not remember that because I was pretty freaked out about all the weather that I had encountered um, a, a little earlier. And so here it was very late at night, um, and the, the RV started shaking back and forth, back and forth. And every once in a while, there was a huge bang. You can hear it in the clip, like bang. And it later turned out there were beams from a different building that was hitting me like that. Now, because I could not get across the street to the sheriff's department. Keep in mind, I had been there for hours. Uh, there was a shift change in the meantime, and I didn't know if anybody even remembered that I was st stuck in this area there. And so I called my friend Edie uh, back here in Olympia, Washington, to get the phone number to the sheriff's department because it would have blown me off the highway trying to get over there. So she helped me out, and um, and I called them and asked Kathy remembered that I was there and they said, yeah, in an extreme emergency, they would come get me. So as soon as we can cue this clip, um, um, the, the audio is very important on that. I became a philosopher that night and after a struggle, I decided I was going to play that, um, that for you because it was very emotional and I was scared. So if you cannot hear fear in my voice, you should have. Um, you should hear it because I was really, really afraid. And, um, and so that's where we're going. Maybe being stuck in the car wash in Roby, uh, Texas, as soon as we get there. And I'm just going to be quiet and let you experience that. Car wash and Relax. This is only the beginning, he said. Nice little wind. That's going to be an interesting night. I might try to take the Sunday lightning for you. That's all I saw all night. I know it's going to work or not. So scary. Can't say I'm a little scared, because I am. several hours of this. That's all I saw. And to top it off... In the middle of nowhere. The whole town is closed. Sheriff's apartment is behind me. They said I should come in here and hide. The cat, Miss E.T., slept with me every night. 
That particular night, she got in her cage and closed the door behind her. So I would say I was alone. And right after I talked to Evie, the phone died. So I had nothing, only that. several hours. I had tried to leave earlier. Waiting for the lightning. I tried to leave earlier, I drove six miles, turned around I and came I back. I guess I could set it here. On the dashboard. I don't know what kind of lights those are. Yes, a little lightning every once in a while. So that's just to give you an idea what it looked like. So. The universe always has a purpose for everything. I was trying to get out of this town. And I did, and I turned around and I came back. Scared. I was scared. Everything is closed. All the stores and everything. Yeah. The sheriff's department knows I'm here. But that's about it. These are the trucks trying to get out of here. I don't know if you can hear that. Yeah. I don't know where they're going. There was nowhere to go, actually. All surrounded by horrendous weather. It, 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 there was a trash can with a lot of garbage. And uh, what was so amazing, it never blew away the garbage, even though it Yesterday. took buildings. I had a bad case of nerves, and it was windy last night too, so. Today was my first day alone. And I spent almost all of it waiting here. Yeah, I was there all day and all that night. Well, it's spooky. I still know what those lights are. Hmm. Hmm. Can't find your lightning. You know, uh, <coughs> excuse me. You know, it is um, a quarter to three in the morning now. I'm still out waiting this horrendous wind here in this nice place that the people have made available to me. However, um, I think I'm going to put some of Larry Dodge's uh, postcards behind this thought that I'm having here. 
Um, Cheer you up a little. <laughs> emotionally, I'm going through some changes here, and I wanted to document that for you. Um, I'm in a strange place. There are no people on the street. They haven't been since maybe five o'clock, six o'clock. Um, there is nothing on the news about the weather. The only thing I really have, there is a trash bin back here with some garbage in it. And I'm kind of wondering, how come this garbage has not been flying away? In the meantime, I've laid down trying to get some rest for several hours. And that's not possible because something inside of me is listening uh, for anything, sounds, whistles, flying debris, anything like that. And um, so every fiber in my body is somewhat alert here. I'm on alert. And um, after about my fifth cup of coffee, um, I, I had some thoughts I wanted to share with you. Now, it is said that the light workers are processing things for millions of people. Supposing that's true, being alert and the fear, and there is fear, make no mistake about it. Uh, That is a lot to deal with, and what I've arrived at here in the last, just in the last few minutes is that um, because some of us are processing things for the Earth, Mother Earth, and um, so a little coyote on the Cheyenne Reservation talked about the fact that we can't go any further and um, Mother Earth is going to retaliate now. The other thing this brings to mind is Dr. James McKinney, the one that talked about Planet X and uh, how universe is dealing with things at this time and how the planet's coming from behind the sun and interferes with um, the Earth's gravitational field here. So these are all things that we have to deal with. So I haven't said all that and showing you pictures of some of the destruction that we have ran into. Um, what I'm thinking is that it is really a shame that as a species we have to create other problems, meaning I, I'm thinking about the people that don't know at what time someone is going to throw bombs at them, um, attack them some kind of way. They're in their houses and have to listen for things. Uh, here again, flying objects, noises that don't belong here. And I know we all come to this earth to live for a while and live out some purpose. Uh, it's just hard for me to deal with the fact that some of our purpose could be to teach others lessons. Um, Pierce City, the, the town where President Bush had went to, uh, um, well, this time, it's just a few days ago, the town was wiped out just about and only one person died, the preacher. Now, why was that? I mean, people must have been prepared, people must have all hovered together and had a plan. And that's kind of what we need is a plan except in wartime, when we turned on our TV and watched the war and the bombs go off and the explosions. I'm trying to, I'm trying to imagine what the people 
of the war zone went through. I'm trying to understand what the soldiers went to. <coughs> it's just wrong. The whole thing is just wrong. We're going to have to learn how to live in peace and show love for each other and do things for each other and help each other and so that original instinct when there is a problem we all have it together that needs to be put back in place the senses have to be put back in place we have to go back to natural time and stop some of the foolishness that got to stop this foolishness. Um, I watched a show one time um, with a woman named Chris Chisholm, I think was her name, and um, she had a lot to say, but her mode of talk was very irritating to me because it sounded so monotone. She would start on a sentence and then she would freeze the word, just like I did here a few minutes ago. But I think that could be really easy done when we're trying to uh, just come up with the thoughts in our mind and put them on tape. These thoughts might never be shared with you. And maybe I'm just talking for myself here. But either way, I just wanted to state that. And... Um, Just a lot of things I'm thinking about on this very stormy night between <laughs> in this old car wash, truck car wash in the middle of nowhere in Texas. So I'm gonna try to get a little rest again. But I guess somebody has to do it world is not an easy task. <laughs> but I guess somebody has to do it. So all I can really do is send mother. Yeah, it was incredible and that's all I saw. We was trying to work some in there for you but it just wouldn't do it. So I'm assuming that universe wanted you to see what I saw for that whole night and like I said I was scared. <laughs> And I have very little fear, um, like fear and all that. Now, um, then uh, I finally did go see my friend, and um, I was only 87 miles from where I really needed to go. And then, <coughs> excuse me, then she has really rare um, birds in her yard, and it took me three days to um, sit and get those birds for you. So we're going to go right on to the next clip and um, take you to my to my friends and then we're going to go um, eventually we're going to go to Roswell and there's a place called Tatum and you don't please don't buy gas in Tatum because eventually it turned out that they bring the gasoline in from 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 somewhere else and the tanks are not cleaned and uh, we had lots of problem with some bad gas we had gotten in Tatum um, New Mexico and so as soon as we get queued up, we're going to take you to a better space uh, now that you experience what it feels like to sit in the middle of nowhere in the dark and have things thrown at you. I am chasing a bird right. so it's, that it's gonna get is better here. on the endangered species list. And even at that place, here. there were... 60 mile an hour winds that very yeah, same might be from that. That's what you're hearing. Turtle dog, they stand for being between two dimensions. So, running two timelines. Yeah. Beautiful. 
Here come eat a little bit. The beautiful color, the yellow, almost looks like he's a canary with a coat on. What's the name of him? Well, the problem is, that, you know, he's called a black cap. Vireo, because of his black head. Uh -huh. A black cap? Vireo. Vireo. But you're getting the front of him where he's so gorgeous, but it's the black head that why they call it the black cap. Vireo. Mm hmm. Outside they were tarzan. just beautiful. Yeah. Everybody here got hammered with flooding and uh, 60 mile hour winds a couple of nights ago. And some of it is still flooded here. This is not too far from Midland in Crawford, Texas. These guys aren't offering. See, so see how flooded it is here. Standing water. Even out here in dry West Texas. I believe it was in Odessa, uh, someone got killed. People in most of the country have called these oil wells, but out here they're all wells. <laughs> That's Sean, he hooked back up yes, with me. That's what you do, talk funny. Oh, look at here. See, there's a bunch of blood. Yeah, people died. His parents brought him where I was, and we continued together. It was scary. It stinks. It's thing. <laughs> this is on the way. Oil refinery or something. This is between Big Springs, Texas, and Hobbs, New Mexico. On the way to Lovington. Hobbs. It was the second time I traveled that road. First time was with yep, Monica Ryan. Oil tankers. Monica Ryan Smith the year before. It's Didn't a very pleasant drive. Huh? Uh, wow. Oh, no. Is it oil? Is it milk? Milk? <laughs> Yum. A milk well. Honda, real cowboy. <laughs> Not in Texas, but in New Mexico. <laughs> so, what is it that you do? Oh, I have a ranch out here east of Tatum. In Tatum, New Mexico. Tatum, New Mexico. That's hmm? the place with the gas. Okay, so I'm going to, uh, I want to get your whole attire, so I'm going to ask you to <laughs> okay. do that thing for me again. Huh. We got some, we, we got some still photos here. <laughs> That's <laughs> Monica Ryan Smith in the corner there. It, can you hear me now? Oh, how oh, cool. Wait a minute, uh, let me get a close up. Do that again. I'll, we'll do a close up of that. Wow. That's not his, right? No. Wow. He's been doing, he's been doing camel stuff. Rusty tell her you know Bill West. <laughs> that's your name, Bill West? No, that's no? my friend right there, Bill West. So what is your name? Rusty Hinder. Rusty? Rusty Hinder. Hinder, Rusty. Yeah. What do you think Rusty about? Rusty Hinder. Another Rusty? Another Rusty. Rusty. Well, yeah, so, oh, he must so. be a good subject. He is. He's got to be good. He's the man. He's the man. <laughs> yeah. I got the man. So, so, and, and uh, your little spot there you've been working with? Been helping some neighbors brand. Na branding. Branding. Oui. Okay. And all the stuff that goes with that, right? Yeah, I got some in the soft here, and, and you are the lady. Oh, no. no, okay. Yeah, <laughs> okay. This is no fair. Right here, she's a good, good woman. They were wonderful oh, people. Yeah. <laughs> and, and the name of this place well, is the I'm Burger Barn, huh? Right? Right? It's the Burger Barn. Oh, yes. if you uh, yeah. if you give her an address. That's why you're trying to go to Oswald. I come up here and see this town Yeah, we'll do that. We're gonna put all of that together in here. Oh, yes. I mean, our picture and here's the plans. <laughs> so, and this Where is actually on the way to Roswell. It's 97 miles to Roswell. So I, I say, <laughs> have to get gas before you get to Tatum. Oh, my. We're going to see nothing like that. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my What's your horse's name? <laughs> What's your horse's name? 
just west of it. The sign says, Llano Estacado. Nomadic Indians and countless buffalo herds dominated this vast plain when the Vas Vasquez de Coronado expedition explored it in 1541. Later, it was the focus of Comanchero activity, and in the 19th century, it became a center for cattle ranching. The name Llano Estacado, or Stockaded Plains, refers to the fortress-like appearance of its escarpments give you a pan of the area. Fairly desolate. There's a few cattle, a lot of scrub, a lot of choya. Then right about yes. then we made a new friend. Najona. Llano yeah. Estacado. That was a choya patch. I've heard choya stories, but I really like them. So, even though they have stickers and can give you a bad time. And here's a close up of a choya. So much life in the desert. Just. You can see some ants crawling around. There's some grasshoppers around here too. There's the blossom. That's beautiful. Real pretty plant. <laughs> Excuse me. That's really, really pretty. This is in the background. That's where we had met our friend Paul. Gonna make out some sand dunes. That loving trail. <laughs> this famous old cattle trail running 2,000 miles from Texas to Wyoming was blazed in 1866 by Charles Goodnight and Oliver Loving. In New Mexico, the trail followed the Pecos River north of Fort Sumner, where the government needed beef to feed the Navajos at the Bosque Redondo Reservation. Quick little pan. It was a small ranching operation. And you know, it's, um, I pull over and read, and read those plaques because they tell a whole story because uh, sometimes we don't have time to stop and talk to locals. So as we were filming this, a car pulled up behind us and a young man um, came and he is so delightful. His name is Paul. And um, of course we thought that was the end of it, but then he, it turned out that yeah, we got to spend quite a bit of time with him later, um, you know, even the next day because we, after we talked to him, we started to run in some more trouble. And Paul had such a delightful uh, way to look at life. Uh, we're just going to share that whole interview with him, with you, from beginning to end. I mean, he was just one great person, and we really appreciated him coming to talk to us. So enjoy. That Having is a blast. Paul. We're recording the uh, Llano Estacado, and he stopped, and we started talking to him. And you were talking about going to Egypt. Right, and uh, you uh, see the hiero, I think I'm pronouncing it right, the hieroglyphics? Yeah. And they have uh, little, uh, just drawn objects about uh, 
people pointing up to the stars or or they're pointing out towards the ground where they see something mm -hmm. and on when you follow the trail it shows uh the little spaceship it'll show you a little spaceship embedded into the into the pyramids and uh it'll show these uh, other little like stick figures with the bubbles around the head huh and it's it, to me it's just it, it's a trip because that's on the other side of the world man right and we're here in roswell yeah exactly and, and this stuff has been happening so i don't think that we're the only ones in this whole so the whole universe right there has to be something else i don't know what it is but there has to be something else and and i believe that i just can't see us the universe being so big and we're so nothing in the universe that there's nothing else i think that's pretty neat a lot of people think i'm crazy but i don't care <laughs> we don't think you're crazy no. <laughs> some people do yeah. that's because they're i don't think they're they're open-minded they they want to stick to the fact that just here on earth Mm -hmm. They won't. They won't expand their mind to uh, uh, find out anything. Yeah, sometimes it's a lot safer that way for them. Yeah, and it, it, those are the people that believe and will totally believe the Bible. <laughs> that things happened six thousand years ago here. Right. But there's known facts that there there's things here happening fifteen million years ago. Right. Yeah. So. Uh, who was who was it who was here between there yeah who's been here all this time yeah and and you know it's just it's just so so uh i don't know it's just it, it's like a wonderment how come they don't come and see you well that's because we have nothing here for them nothing no fuel nothing i think they it's just like any place else just like here on earth you're bound to have an accident mm -hmm. and so some of these uh ships that come in here they're not here to come and refuel or ask anybody anything and if they do and if we do have fuel i think this is what i think i think we have it in us yeah. now hey. oh that's a good one yeah, yeah. i, I was us. just gonna tell you um enough i just talk loud all right um i'm not made up for camera go, okay. go this way go this all way. right fine okay well what happened was um I interviewed the head of the NSA of Russia, and uh -huh. that was one of the things that he talked about. And they think that when they crash or when they become so visible, they are in trouble. And they just need to reload or re repair themselves because then they go back into a different dimension. And he told of crashes in Russia that was pretty incredible. Yeah. That sounds good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's go back to your theory, theory about it within yourself. That Them coming good here? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I don't think there's nothing here on this earth that they can use as far as fuel. Mm -hmm. Now, if they did, there, there'd be more stops and we would see uh, extracts of something, something that we don't know about. No construction worker was here, made this big hole or anything like that. But it's always people. People are always being taken up. They never take a truck. They never take a bike, a cat, nothing. It's always humans. So it's what I, I, this was like 10 years ago. I just popped into my head. I think we have inside us what they need for fuel or whatever it is to repair. Mm -hmm. Cause they're not taking nothing else. I hadn't even thought about, but you live in this area. This is a pretty normal concept for you, is it not? I, I mean, you, you, you grew up with, Oh, I've UFOs always thrown up, normal, yeah, right? yeah, U UFOs, I've always thought of, uh, of UFOs like that, you know, I've, uh, when I was young, even my friends told me, man, you're crazy, dude, you, you've mm -hmm. been smoking pot or something, I said, no, man, it's just something that comes into your head, mm -hmm. you know, you gotta go look it, in that door. It, it's annoying. Yeah. Right, and, and they just say, oh, you're crazy, man, you're crazy, you need to quit talking like that, mm -hmm. you, you just like that, uh, uh, Timothy O'Leary guy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Uh, I don't know if you stated how we ran into this gentleman I here. Did. did you? Okay. Now, I, in the meantime, I stepped out for a minute and you have a, a sticker uh, on your truck. It says, uh, I have no life. My kids play soccer. Right. So you have children, I assume. Yes. Uh-huh. So 
So what do you tell your children if, you, if they ask you? They don't have to ask me. Ah. I've told them all these stories since they were little babies. Oh, cool. Uh, yeah, and it's just a story that I want to pass on, you know, because I think it's important for people to know that, uh, don't take it for granted that we're the only ones mm -hmm. in, in this place. That is cool. There, there's just no, uh, there's no truth to that, mm -hmm. none. If we have the ability to fly and go somewhere else, then I think there's somebody else that, oh, oh, they, they've been doing that. Mm -hmm. For quite a long time. Oh, yeah, yeah for a long time. Uh, the universe is how many billions of years old. I can't believe that there's nobody out there already figured things out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, but our government is pretty hush hush on this deal. So, what? Are, why, how come they don't want us to know? They don't want us to know that there's something out there greater than, than we are. are. Yeah. Yeah. Something could come here and just take over. Yeah. But we're we're of no significance to these whatever is coming here. Now, I, in, in, in early in the year, I interviewed a, a gentleman from Beijing, China. He was the head of the, what you could consider the UFO um, investigation society in China. And he said, 1% of, of all the people are acknowledged outside life. And that amounted to 1 billion with the B people. One billion people and only one percent, or is it one billion? I didn't understand that. Um, he he is the he is the head of the Chinese uh, that oversees the uh -huh. extraterrestrial phenomenon and unusual and and he said that that there is one billion Chinese uh -huh. people that find this normal. Wow. Mm -hmm. It's that's only such a small percentage. Well, that's because uh, uh, Orientals you know? are open-minded. Mm -hmm. They're really open-minded. Yeah. And they believe in energy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. They believe in energy. That's what I believe in, energy. Mm -hmm. uh, and I also don't believe that you can't have something and take it down to nothing. It's impossible. Mm -hmm. It's impossible. You break it apart into pieces. You can break it down in pieces, What's going to take you to the point of nothing is that technology doesn't allow us to see that small. Yeah. But there's no way that you can have something and break it down to nothing. I don't care if you burn it. Smoke particles just went. That's it's yeah. still something. Yeah. There's still oh, something. Yeah. There's still something. Nothing's finite. No. No. Nothing. Nothing at all. Not even us. Uh -uh. We go somewhere. Yeah. You like that, huh? Oh, yeah. That's, that's my <laughs> I'm not camera shy. Give me a microphone. I'll talk all day. Yeah. No, as far as microphone, you know, it, it's, it's all built in. Yeah. It, it's so amazing because the name of the documentary is uh, Who Took the... Who Took... What's the name who of Who Put the Para in the you. Normal. Who Put the Para in the Normal. Uh, the yeah. Paranormal, huh? Yeah, yeah. And we found that what's Para to somebody is... Normal to somebody else. Exactly. Yeah. That's what makes us so unique, man. Yeah. Now, I got a story. 1974. The summer of 1974. Uh, it was my... Uh, Freddy Fuentes, Nicky Fuentes, uh, my brother Lolly, and I were sitting on the corner of the street. The light was out, and we were talking about maybe we should call the public service people to come fix the light, because we were tired of... It had already been like three days. Mm -hmm. We played baseball and football at night. Well, one evening, and we got scared. We saw this big green glow over there in the baseball field, and we probably lived maybe five blocks from the baseball field. And we just looked there, totally astonished. We wanted to go, but too scared. <laughs> we didn't know what the heck was going on. And then the it, it was like a like a globe. It was like a green globe of, 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 of just glowing green. It must have stayed there for like maybe 10 seconds. Mm -hmm. The whole ordeal lasted about 10 seconds when we noticed the green ball and then all of a sudden the green ball went out. We That's when we went over to the baseball field. Mm -hmm. See, it even scares me now to even talk about <laughs> it. And uh, 
It gives me. This yeah, you're yeah, standing see, on it. See, look at there. Yeah. Look, man. Yeah. Yeah. Look at that. That's a one that's in a million shot. Right there. Yeah. When you get scared, just to tell see the hair something. stand up on his arm. Uh, <laughs> and we went over there, and nothing. Nothing. We walked all over. We even, you know, we, we already were like investigated. We were looking at the grass to see if it had been laid down or anything. Uh -huh. Nothing. But all we knew is there was this great big old green ball, and you could hear traffic moving around over there, mm -hmm. and there was nothing that had taken off. Well, since you have a date, you, you know, something that you can remember it by, the UFO reporting center in Seattle and. Uh, uh, there's links to uh, on on all of my pages. Uh -huh. They they write down everything that has been reported for that day, so you might be able to find a record of what you just told us that because day, huh? someone else uh, reported it. The only reason, um, the only way we can monitor what it's worth for people to call in, and then this is how they can determine what it was, what it looked like, which way was it going, how fast was it going. And blue and green ball, they are seen quite often. Are they? Yeah. Uh, and in fact, I was talking to an artist one time. He, uh, he's, he plays music and he paints. And I asked him uh, one time, you know, what, what had started him on these strange paintings. He paints angels. Uh -huh. And he said he saw a green ball, and he thought it was the Holy Spirit. That's what I would think if I was painting <laughs> angels. So, so, you know, we do know that people see them all the time. So we're not the only ones that saw a green ball. We're, no. You're the first person to tell me this. Mm -hmm. I've told two people this story. Mm -hmm. You all and the lady that I was telling you all about uh -huh. that was, uh, said that she was black. And now mm -hmm. she, she's whiter than you are. Yeah. George Lee is the man's name. Beautiful artist. He paints angels. He always saw? has a glow behind him. Yeah. No, I'm sorry. Well, I think I'm, 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 after what happened to me, I think I'm special now. I had a, uh, a, a perforated colon. Mm -hmm. and, ah. and a lot of people told me, I was, how are you alive? Mm -hmm. And even the doctor told me, he said, I don't know what happened. He said, but, because uh, I went into the ER, and you know, you can feel yourself dying. Mm -hmm. You can feel that. Oh, yeah. uh, worries go away. You don't even worry about what's happening to you. Yeah. It's just peaceful. Peaceful, man. And uh, you get tunnel vision. You don't, you can't see no no peripheral vision whatsoever. You get this, and then when people talk to you, there's an echo going on. Hmm. When people talk to you. And uh, I remember that was about it right there, the echo. I remember the echo. Mm -hmm. And I still, and I hadn't been. They still hadn't given me anything yet. Mm -hmm. uh, they gave me when they uh, told me you're gonna go under. And they kept mm -hmm. on telling, they kept on shaking me, Paul, mm -hmm. Paul, stay with us. And I guess they could see my vitals were going down. And yeah, you, but when when uh, I act as a death walker sometimes, that means I help people pass over. And when the body gets to that point, some people can actually see your spirit leaving. I heard, I, that, I heard that. Mm -hmm. They can. They, uh, they and, probably and, saw you fading, of whatever. Yeah, and uh, I'm fine now. You're you fine know, now. Thing, yeah. thing, things are cool now. Yeah. I, I, I never. Now I do believe in in in, in God. We but, all do, yeah. yeah. But there's questions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How come? How come he doesn't talk about dinosaurs in the Bible? I found a place, and I was just on the internet, mm -hmm. and I was looking for something. I forgot what it was, but down about the sixth website, it said uh, dinosaurs talked about in the Bible. Mm -hmm. So I hit that that website, and it said to go to Job 14, mm -hmm. and it talks about two behemoths, uh, one with the tail of cedar, and the other, and uh, they eat ve and they're veg vegetable animals. Mm -hmm. they, they eat the, veg the vegetation. Now in Boswell, if mm -hmm. that's where you live, mm -hmm. in Boswell, right across from the museum, mm -hmm. is a place. It's called the Alien Abduction Resistance Center. Uh -huh. There's a man in there. His name's Guy Malone. And uh, Guy Malone. Yeah, I interviewed him last year, and and he, what he does, he was looking at scriptural backing of things like that. Now, he, he wrote a really good book uh, to a point 
and then you just have to, you know, go from there. We, none of us is perfect. But he has some pretty good scriptures that back up some of these things. Now, this is what I've told people that, that will listen, okay? <laughs> I think, you know God had his angel, his right-hand angel, uh -huh. uh, Lucifer? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can't even pronounce his name right. I make a joke about it, but I think this angel was a woman. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you why. Uh, women trust women. I don't know why. They just, they, they trust each other. They can be the worst enemy, but if you have a boyfriend, she will talk to that woman, and, and, and she will trust her, because she don't trust a man. He's already doing something on his mm -hmm. own. Uh, a man, if you tell a man he can play with a, a million toys, just not this one right here. Mm -hmm. Well, a man, to me, I think is going to enjoy every little toy out there that he possibly can, and not worry about that one. A woman's curiosity is going to kill her. She's going to want to know why can't she not play. And I think the way, the way I was told was that God had told Lucifer that he can mess with anything up here, just don't mess with this. And I think this right here was creation. Mm. And I think, well, I call him Lucy. This is what I call Luth. him. Yeah. <laughs> no, T-H. Oh. Lucy. Lucy. Yeah, Lucy. I think he's the one that tried to mess with creation, and that's when God said, I told you not to be doing that. Now you go down. Yeah. He cast what you, whatever philosopher. he did to him, right? Yeah. Her. Or her. Because yeah. she... It, uh, that angel was so curious as to want, yeah. they didn't mess with, she, he or she didn't mess with anything else. But you know, for a long time, uh, uh, I always think that angels are not gender oriented. This is a possibility, but uh -huh. the mind of a woman. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> the mind the of curiosity a got her. Uh, not to uh, offend you or anything, it's oh, just, no, I'm not offended. just, just, just the way I, I think, think because cool. of, the things, of the things that I've noticed that men do uh -huh. and the things that women do. Women are curious, just like cats, they're curious. Mm -hmm. They can't leave well enough alone. And some of our inventions are done because a woman was curious. Uh -huh. Some of our best inventions. But yeah. we, we, we have saved your time or two. Right, right. Yeah. And, <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, I think Lucy went ahead and tried to do something with creation, mm -hmm. the animals and, and, and the people, and it didn't come out right. And God said, no, no, we're not having none of that. <laughs> so he destroyed the earth. You know, he, he brought yeah. something new about. Uh. And this goes on the same thing when he told Noah to get your boat, get go, and animals will come to you, and this was a big boat but he destroyed it again. Mm -hmm. But getting back to the dinosaurs, I think it was that angel who tried to mess with creation. Mm -hmm. Didn't have all the, have all the, 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 the things right, the, 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 the algebra. Didn't have all the algebra mm -hmm. right and everything like that. So God had to say, no, we're not having none of that. That's not, that's not part of the Luthi. process. <laughs> Luthi, yeah. But anyway, that, that's, that's the way I believe. Cool. It's just like uh, Genesis says he uh, he did this in six days. Well, who six days? Yeah. This guy has Alpha and Omega, and we're talking about six days. Mm. Yeah. Who six days? Mm. Now they put try to put a time in there on on what's happening, but uh, like I said, you know, I don't think we're the only people here, and there's somebody else out there that has created some kind of warp travel. You can't go there, baby. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, faster than speedy light. What do they call the other one? Well, no. Warp drive. <laughs> uh, the no, wormholes? Uh, no, there's something... Uh, it's called split, uh, slip Quantum stream. Speed? No. No. Uh, it's the word uh, they use, where it goes from... Scalar wave. No. One dimension to <laughs> another <laughs> in, this, like, this, tenths of a uh, second. It might be. It's something like... Oh, something like a wormhole. It'll bend. Oh, yeah. And instead of taking you straight, it, it, it'll bend. Yeah, they have proven that. The scientists have proven that actually what happened is like, uh, here you are and here you are. It's just over and forth like that. Are you, yeah, it's oh, she's fine. Are, are you familiar with the Philadelphia experiment? Yeah. Yeah, that was sort of incorporated into that. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. But I think it's, it's pretty neat that uh, well, we're gonna, there's a lot up there. We're probably going to be at Walmart uh, in, uh, in Roswell. Roswell. In Roswell, yeah. So, so after soccer, if you want to pack up the kids and come and visit us again, you know, we'll probably be there. I don't think I'm going to get too much further than... I got a little sticker. It's on where I was sitting right mm -hmm. here. Has uh, I forget what it says. It's about aliens. Uh, I think it says I think we're the only ones here. Mm -hmm. I think that's what it is. Just a little yeah. magnetic sticker that I keep there. Yeah, we have a we have a generator, and so so if you manage to work your way over there, we can show you the actual footage of the spook lights if you like. Okay. It'd be fun for the kids, you know. And these are the lights that. that, that yeah, the just, lights in Missouri. Yeah. That we just filmed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But in order to play it, we have to, you know, get the, you know, get the generator going yeah. and stuff. Ah, uh, you noticed my sticker, huh? I, I, yeah. I, I, I did, yeah. So. Well, I had, had, my oldest one, no, the baby from my first wife, she's out, she's uh -huh. doing her thing, she's out of soccer. Now I got a little one, Elizabeth, she's five, now I got to put her in there and yeah. not have a life anymore. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, it's a wonderful life. I've been blessed. Yeah, yeah. See, you notice I always smile. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's people think I'm always on something vodka yeah. or something. Yeah. You know, they say you, this world is not that happy. <laughs> I say, oh yeah, yeah, it, yeah is. it is. Yes, yeah. it is. It's just that you people are looking through this right here. Yeah. Uh -huh. Not looking at the whole picture. Yep. Yeah. You gotta look at the whole picture yeah. to really enjoy life. Yeah. So that might be enjoyable. You know, like that. We we're gonna. Uh, we're trying to run and buy some stickers at the museum. I don't know what time they close. And then I think we'll we'll hang out at Walmart, last Walmart till Gallup. So we That's spend where you're going? There. Mm -hmm. Socorro and then Socorro. Magdalena and then Gallup. Yeah. Yeah. Have y'all been to the ancient Indian ruins? Where? Uh, uh, Straight down this road, you know the 380 I was telling you about? Mm -hmm. You got to take that 380 to Carrizozo, mm -hmm. hang a right in Carrizozo, and then there's a sign. These people had a network going on. We You're think we have networks going on with mm -hmm. computers. These people had what we call, you know, in, in computer land, they got portholes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. These people had portholes. Everybody had a little hole, you know, some people were larger. But if you wanted to send like a message or some food to the other side of the community, send it on, networking. Oh it just keeps on going. And wow. I thought that was neat because here we are with technology that tells us to network, mm -hmm. but these people had the most simplest form of networking. And they had one-on-one -on -one communication. Yeah. I thought yeah. that was pretty neat. And their houses, they're about that big. Oh, the Ansavi. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I actually, uh, I did a show. I covered that already. And they got this huge church. Right. Mm -hmm. in, in, in the middle of their, in the middle of their little powwow deal. And on the north side, you can see forever. Forever and ever. You can pretty much see the earth go around. Yeah, but I thought that was pretty neat, too. Cool. Good. So it, it's been wonderful. Like I said, we're gonna run and get some stickers. These kind of stickers. Uh huh. And um, and then we'll station ourselves at the Walmart in Roswell. So it's the bike you like, and we can share the furniture. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Thanks for talking. Yeah, thanks. Cool. No problem. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> that was Paul and his wonderful philosophy. Now that wasn't the last we saw him because we did go to Walmart. We missed the museum by like two minutes and they wouldn't let me in, so I couldn't buy the stickers. Um, and then we had problems with the generator that uh, Paul was trying to help us with. He called a mechanic for us. They came the next morning and we found a very nice garage that um, tried to put our generator together. Of course, that didn't work so good, but we tried. And um, the other thing, I had a, a Sprint telephone that I needed to hook onto the computer and um, so I would have a, a telephone line so I could use the computer. Well, no matter where we stopped, could nobody fix that telephone. And 
so they kept telling us it was the computer that was in trouble. And it turned out that Paul was a, a computer um, person. And he was like one block away from Guy Malone that we talked to last year from the uh, abduction, alien abduction resistance center. So we went to Paul's office. He checked our computer. The computer was fine. We was able to check our email and hooked him and Guy together. And the, the young man was just so enjoyable. And um, that's why we played that whole interview. And we are still in touch with him. And we still have a laugh or two. And, what a philosophy we had. Now, next week, we're going to um, uh, we're gonna stop in Roswell for a minute, and then we're going to go to Socorro and visit a baboon refuge. Uh, I'm going to show you live volcano, and then we're just going to continue on um, all the way to, I'm not sure if it's Moab, but we're going to go quite a way. So let me run for today. Come join us next week for the next Nazoni show and come see us again and keep up the good works and bring me your stories. See you next week. Cool. <laughs>